Okay, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. This is the December 20th, 2022 meeting of the Transportation Parking Commission. My name is Donna Lascalia. I'm the chair of the commission and the director of the Department of Public Works. I just want to announce that this meeting is being audio and video recorded. Beth, if you are ready, please call the roll. Donna. Here. Jody. Here. Jamie. Here. Carolyn. Here. Nancy. Here. Karen is not here yet, correct? I, I'm uh, here. Yep, she's here. Oh, you are there. Hi. Uh, Jamila. Here. Adam is not. And Diana. Here. You definitely have a quorum. Uh, thank you, Beth. Okay, now I'll um, ask if there's anybody here for public comment. This is your opportunity to speak to the commission on uh, any matter that you would like. Um, I ask that if you are here for a specific agenda item that's listed on the agenda, that you hold your comment until we get to that agenda item, which makes the meeting a little bit more organized and orderly. Um, but if you are here to speak to something which is not on the agenda, uh, please raise your virtual hand um, and we will recognize you and you can speak. So um, just kind of surveying the room here to see if anyone wishes to speak it for a public comment. Anybody? Okay, I don't see any hands, so... Um, we will move on to approval of the minutes from a previous meeting, which is December 15th, 2022. May I have a motion for a positive recommendation, please? I'll make that motion. May I have a second? I'll second. I'll second. Sorry, Sorry. was that Jody who, who uh, was first? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, is there any discussion on the minutes from November 15th? Okay, hearing none, Beth, please call the roll. Donna? Um, I will abstain. I was not present. Jody? Yes. Jamie? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Karen? Yes. Jamila? Yes. Diana? Abstain, I was also not here. So that's six yeses and two abstentions. Thank you, Beth. Okay, next up is reports from departments and subcommittees. Um, I'll start with a couple of updates on behalf of, of public works. So our road construction project on Route 66 is complete and uh, the contractor has uh, demobilized for the winter. Also doing some work in the Gothic Street parking lot, some uh, drainage work at, at the um, uh, James House. Um, and that lot was temporarily uh, had uh, parking restricted and it has now reopened. Um, it's also several ongoing mass DOT projects on King Street, Damon Road and Route 5. Those projects are being managed, as, managed by mass DOT District 2. Um, I'll also mention um, that next month, so for January's TPC meeting, uh, we intend to put uh, um, a discussion of traffic safety at the high school on the agenda. Uh, I know there's quite a bit of community interest in that um, and we will intend to have that as a formal agenda item um, for January's meeting where we will have a, a discussion of uh, next steps um, and, and how to best move forward in that area. So uh, any other updates for us this afternoon? Okay, Carolyn, go ahead. Um, just an update, the Bicycle Pedestrian Subcommittee met last week and um, related to the comment that you just made about the high school, um, the subcommittee voted to recommend that TPC 
look at potential um, interim measures that might be temporary to address um, safety, um, slow traffic and address safety at the intersection um, during the time in which we're, we would be evaluating long range permanent solutions to the issues in that area. Thanks, Carolyn, appreciate it. Any other updates from any members of the commission? Okay, hearing none, we'll move on to matters before the commission. Um, we have several traffic calming requests on the agenda. Um, and the way that I would like to do this just to facilitate conversation is that um, I will give a, a brief overview of, of the traffic calming application and talk, uh, the chief of police and, and I will talk uh, a little bit about what the city has, has done to collect data. Um, and at that point, I will open it up for public comment. Um, what I would ask members of the public comment is if you could raise your um, virtual hand and we will recognize you. I will need your name and city, city or town of residence for the record. Um, and we do uh, ask that you limit your comments to three minutes just so that we can, uh, again, facilitate the, the discussion and hear everyone who wishes to be heard. Um, so that's how we're gonna run through the, the five traffic calming applications that are on the agenda this evening. Um, so with that being said, we'll start with the discussion of the traffic calming request for Meadow Street. So we have uh, received um, quite a few uh, uh, traffic calming applications from residents of, of Meadow Street. Um, they have come in sort of on a, on a rolling basis. Um, as most of you may know, uh, we did undertake a significant reconstruction of Meadow Street uh, over the last uh, construction season. Um, and I will talk a little bit uh, about some of the changes uh, which were implemented as part of that project. Um, we uh, constructed the road um, and uh, reconstructed the road and the sidewalk on the north side from Lilly Library to Corticelli Street. Um, we reconstructed concrete wheelchair ramps at the intersections of Lilly Street and Meadow Street and Corticelli and Meadow. Um, we put in 10 foot wide high visibility crosswalks with pedestrian signage at the intersections of Lilly and Meadow and Corticelli and Meadow. And um, we installed uh, bikes may use full lane signs and painted shared lane markings to bring awareness to the cyclists um, or to uh, awareness to the fact that cyclists are sharing the road. Um, we had a very limited pavement width um, to work with, so we were not able to put in dedicated bicycle lanes, which required more uh, footage um, than we had. Um, so that was the reason that dedicated bike lanes were not installed. Um, we also installed three paved parking areas, which have room for for nine uh, marked parallel roadside parking spaces. And, and that was to um, get uh, parking sort of off the road and create a scenario where we were not compacting the side of the street and, and creating stormwater difficulties. Um, we also realigned the uh, intersection of Meadow Street with Spring Street. Um, to reduce the turning radius and to slow turning vehicles down. So those were some of the changes that were implemented as part of this construction project. Um, and now I will turn it over to the chief to talk a little bit about collision data and the speed data that her department collected. Chief? Thank you. Uh, we looked at uh, five years of collision data and I conducted this analysis on June 30th of 2022. So it would be five years of data back from June 30th. There were five collisions over the five years. Uh, one was uh, a collision with a moose. A second involved a single vehicle sliding on snow. Then there were three that involved driver error at intersections. In these five collision speed wasn't determined to be a significant factor. Um, we then looked at speed data, and the way that we do that is we install a, a small device that does not display speed. We do have speed display signs. That's not what this is. It's a small covert device. Uh, we placed it in the area of 70 Meadow Street from August 14th to the 27th, 2022. During the data collection period, 17,200 vehicles were analyzed. The speed limit, as the director 
uh, mentioned is uh, 35 miles per hour. The average speed was 35 and the 85th percentile speed was 35.9 miles per hour. So we did not detect a significant speeding issue on Meadow Street. Okay, thanks chief. Um, so at this point, um, what I will ask is if there are any comments or questions from members of, of the commission um, on anything that the chief and I have just discussed, um, just wanna open that up first. And then um, I will ask uh, if, if folks do wish to speak on this topic from the public, we will recognize you if you raise your hand. So anyone from the commission have any comments uh, or, or questions for the chief or me? Okay, seeing none, is there anyone here from the public who wishes to speak to us about Meadow Street? Okay, I see a hand, James Burke. We'll unmute you, hold on just a moment. Yes, hi, um, I'm James Burke. I live at uh, 70 Meadow Street, which is right at the corner of uh, uh, Corticelli, Corticelli and, and Meadow. And I've lived there for about a year and a half. And um, I'm, I'm concerned that it, it seems to me that cars are going too fast. And it may be that at some of that time, just going even, 35 or a little bit more is too fast given the situation, you know, the circumstances. So for instance, I see a lot of people come up to Corticelli because it's right at my corner and then they go, they make that left on the Corticelli and they're going really fast. Uh, they're not slowing down. And um, it almost just always makes me think if there's a car right there, you cannot, it's very hard to see down Corticelli um, before you get to it, or if there's a pedestrian or bike rider, you know, it's going to be a pretty bad scene. The other thing is, you know, in the time that I've lived here, which again is a year and a half, I'm aware of one accident that involved a child up near the athletic fields. And then right across from my house, a friend of mine parked their car and we went out in the evening. We came back, her car had been totaled and the car that hit it was also totaled and um, looked horrendous. I mean, I, I'm amazed that the person driving the other car was not badly hurt. Um, so I am aware of it. Um, I'm concerned about it. Uh, I think traffic calming sounds like it, it might address these problems. The other thing is, um, I just want to mention is that the section from say Lily Street up to Corticelli Street is pretty narrow, um, as I think you mentioned, and um, cars park along the street, and it's uh, people have to navigate around those cars, and they they need to slow down. And um, you know, my friend was parked on the street; her car was destroyed. Um, for myself, you know, there's a, if there's a car parked on the street, I have to go around and then turn into my driveway. I've had people honk at me because they think I'm going too slow. I'm just trying to safely go around a car and then make a turn. So it for the kind of street that it is, it's a residential street. It's a street with a lot of kids going up and down it to go to the athletics fields, um, biking and walking in groups. And it just seems like, um, you know, I just get a feeling that it's not safe. And um, I tend to think if we could slow the traffic down, uh, that would help. But maybe okay. there are other solutions. So that, that's what I wanted to say. Thank you. Okay, thanks for your comments. Um, Beth, can you please have the record reflect that Adam Novit joined at 10 past four? Thank you. Okay, is there anyone else who wishes to speak uh, on the topic of Meadow Street? Please raise your virtual hand and, and we will recognize you. 
I had seen Barbara Bricker. Um, Barbara Bricker's hand is up. Okay. All right, Barbara, we'll unmute you. Hold on just a moment. I did click unmute. There, I had to do it on myself also. Yep. So um, there were seven forms filed by you guys. You may know that we've had two meetings and we continue to meet as a neighborhood. That's not just Meadow Street, but we have members from around the neighborhood. First of all, learning. Second of all, trying to affect what we think is a very big problem. I would like to ask the chief, in the five years, how many of those accidents that sh that were recorded are since the reconstruction of the street. Five accidents in five years. How many since the reconstruction of the street? I actually, I don't have that data in front of me because I actually don't have the date of the reconstruction nor the date of the accidents. So a very important to get that to the committee. Is that available for you to do that? You can find that information. Yes, we have the dates of the accidents. Yep. Great, great. Um, so we, so we, the members of the Meadow Street Safety Google Group, will record. Will tell you that it's been at least three since the reconstruction. So um, we want you to get the correct information that's timely to them. And the next thing I want to mention is the eighty-five percent use of the 85% to justify speed. First of all, that was a long time ago. It was, it was, I believe, uh, measured. Uh, tell me again, when was that measured? Did say. It was measured August 14th through the 27th of 2022. So, uh, so recently, four months ago. But, but yes. measured at 70 Meadow Street, which is probably the slowest area on Meadow Street because it is at the blind curve on Meadow Street. Just a point to let you know that we would like to have uh, uh, the details. We have someone who is available to look at the details, the time and the so forth. So that would be great for us to have to look at that exact, those exact measurements. And um, we'd like a measurement that's more on the straightaway, which we call the speedway of Meadow Street, generally from Spring Street to the bridge, which be the fastest area, which is also the area where Grow Foods is and where the Florence Fields is. Um, in addition to that, the 85 percentile is under attack by, attack is probably the wrong word, but there are a lot of experts in the field who are telling us that the 85th percentile is a very improper measurement to justify speed. It is designed for use on specific types of highways and it's designed for use uh, in specific situations. And this is just what the city is using. I'd like the city to really take a look at better ways to justify speed. That's really all I have to say. There was seven, I think, of us who filled out our forms for this, uh, concerns about Meadow Street, deep concerns, especially noted, noted that we did have a child hit already and that child was in the crosswalk and we are anticipating further terrible tragedies on our street. Thank you for your comments, Barbara. Anyone else who wishes to speak on Meadow Street? Hillary? Okay, thank you. Sorry, my last name's not appearing. I'm Hillary Gardner. I'm at 56 Meadow Street. Um, I'm terrified on a daily basis to use my driveway. I live on a side of the street that does not have access to the sidewalk. So if I want to walk to Lily Library, the community garden or Florence Fields, I have to cross the street um, at uh, between Corticelli and Lily where there's a hill. I have to send my son across the street uh, to get down to Florence Fields. Uh, recently on November 19th, a friend was giving me a ride home, making a left turn into my drive headed west on Meadow and was passed on the level on 
<laughs> was passed on the left across the double yellow line. And she was terrorized and terrified by what happened. Um, this happened to me previously prior to the reconstruction of this street. I know I spoke to the director of the DPW about our concerns about the repaving project, creating the conditions for even greater speeding and reckless um, activity to be happening on the road. And we were told that the, the, the mediation items put into place would would somehow calm traffic. For example, the double yellow line was supposed to calm cars doing that. You know, prior to the painting of the street, I was turning left into my driveway. I was passed on the left by a car who stopped and yelled at me and said, I could have gotten myself killed. I could have gotten myself killed for signaling left to make a left onto my driveway. So I, the conditions are there uh, for people to treat this street like a speedway for some reason. And we really, really need uh, something else in place to slow cars down. And um, whether that's a speed hump, raised crosswalk, additional signage, uh, changing the speed limit. I am not sure what it is, but um, I was also a witness to the evening accident that um, my neighbor, Jim Burke described. You know, when you hear the screeching and the cars colliding, you, you don't know what has happened and you don't know what you're gonna find on the street. So it's it's been, um, I don't know. I all I can say is I'm scared. I'm sorry. My friends are scared, <laughs> and um, I hope we can find a solution um, because we we do have kids regularly coming down the street to the park, and um, we would like safer conditions. So thank you for listening, and thank you for your comments. Is there anyone else uh, from the public who wishes to speak about Meadow Street? In terms of next steps, um, oh, I see a hand, Sarah Howard. We'll unmute you. If you could just state your name and, and city or town of residence, please, we'd appreciate it. Thanks. Yeah, hi, I'm, I'm Sarah Howard. I live in Florence, <clears throat> um, not on Meadow Street, but I, I ride my bike on Meadow Street a lot. And um, yeah, I have to say I was, I was dismayed when I saw the, the redesign where it's, it really just is like a runway. <laughs> um, and um, I, I appreciate all the comments that have been made already. I think it really speaks to the road design and how it, um, that influences how people drive. Um, when it looks like a, a big straightaway where people just want to be able to go fast and not have obstacles, um, they are ignoring the fact. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, sorry. Just yeah, we can, yeah, we can um, hear you. Go ahead. <laughs> um, you know, people are acting like there, there aren't going to be obstacles. And then when there is a child coming across from the community garden or the parks, um, they're not expecting it because the design of the road is really what determines how how people treat the road. So I, I just wanna make that comment that overall, I'd, I'd love to see road design that um, that is considering people who are using other modes of transportation besides motor vehicles, that their lives are as important as the people in motor vehicles um, okay. desire to go fast. <laughs> so, thanks. Great. Thank you for your comments. Anyone else have any comments on Meadow Street for us? Director, I will just chime in and say, just looking at the collision data, I think Barbara had asked for the dates. I don't have the dates in months, but I can see that it's divided by year on the report. So there was one in 2018, three in 2019, and one in 2020. I'm actually not sure of when the redesign occurred, but there haven't been any collisions. And remember, this was June 30th. So I know there was definitely a collision that occurred there this summer. Um, but in the five-year look back um, since June, they occurred in 2018, 
19 and 20, just for clarity. Yeah, thanks, Chief. And the the timing of the construction project, it was it was actually stretched over two years. We would not, from an engineering standpoint, consider that project to have been substantially complete um, until uh, really the end of this last construction season. So we're talking like September, October, when the contractor completely demobilized, removed the road construction signs. Um, so at this point, we don't have you know, um, sort of years of redesign data under our belts. I mean, this this project from from kind of a, an engineering and a contract standpoint um, has actually just wrapped up um, within a couple of months. Um, so thanks for that clarification, Chief. Um, in terms of uh, next steps, it, you know, it's important for us to hear from folks who live on Meadow Street. I know that I've had um, uh, email and, and phone conversation with with some folks, um, and you know that that this information and your comments are important to us so that we can determine um, what appropriate next steps are here. Um, as, as we move forward. Um, any members of the commission have any comments uh, about Meadow Street for us uh, before we move on to our next agenda item? All right, Councilor Foster, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanna make sure I, I heard correctly. So the 85th percentile speed was 35. Is, am, I, am I correct on that? 35.9 was 35. the 85th percentile, yes. Okay, so I, I think it was Councillor Nash that brought this up um, a few months ago or a year ago. It's like a, a case of a place where there's not a speeding problem, but there there is a speeding problem. Um, and, and so, right, to think about the crossing between the community gardens and Florence Fields. And I, I, I know um, I used, I biked that street a lot. And when it wasn't paved, I avoided it because it's kind of teeth chattering. And now that it's paved, it sort of invites more use and higher speed. So I, I can definitely see um, the residents' concerns there and, and how um, that, that sort of straight street connecting other places. This is something we tackle quite a bit in the commission where we hear about you know, streets where cars are moving through and there aren't a lot of obstacles to moving at the rate of speed where they feel comfortable. And, um, and, and then you add to that additional traffic with with youth going to sports and, and community gardeners. I, I can definitely see what the, the resident concerns are. I wish I had like the grand solution. I just wanted to make sure I was hearing those numbers correctly. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Councillor Foster. Any other comments from anyone on the commission about Meadow Street? We have another hand from a non-commission. Okay. Brian, yep, go ahead, we'll unmute you. Hi, um, my name is Laura Sizer. I live at 53 Meadow Street. Uh, sorry, I didn't chime in earlier. Um, I wanted to uh, second a lot of what uh, my, my neighbors have been saying, but draw attention to the fact that that intersection, uh, the crosswalk at uh, Meadow and Corticelli is a place where I get very, very anxious every time I, I cross, I take my dogs down to the field. I know, you know, there are lots of people, uh, uh, kids and, um, and older people who, who walk down there for, for exercise. And so because the sidewalk, there's no sidewalk on um, the one side, there's only a sidewalk on the other, you have to cross at Corticelli uh, if, if you wanna go down to the fields. And the straightaway, it looks straight, but there's enough of a curve so that cars coming up from Spring Street cannot see somebody in the crosswalk. Um, and if they're going uh, uh, 35 or, or thereabouts, they don't have time to slow down. And so we're sort of making a, a blind crossing and I rely on, on just listening if I can hear cars coming because I can't see them and they can't see me until they really start to, to hit the bridge. Um, and I will say, especially with uh, more and more electric vehicles, uh, listening for, for cars is an increasingly 
unsafe way to try to make that crossing. So I want to bring attention to the fact that the road curves just enough that cars really can't see the crosswalk or anyone in the crosswalk until it gets too late. Thank you. Okay, thanks for your comments. Okay, um, I, I just wanna confirm there, that there are no further comments from anyone on the commission about this topic. And, and again, we appreciate the, the public being here and the public input. Um, I, our next steps are um, now that construction is substantially complete, um, we would like to monitor this area and we will be in touch with the neighborhood about uh, what our next steps are going to be. So we appreciate everyone's input tonight. Any further comments from the commission before we move on to the next agenda item? Okay, seeing and hearing none. Next up is a discussion of traffic calming on West Street. Um, Chief, if you are ready, uh, speed and collision data in this area. Thanks. Sure, thank you. So I reviewed collision on June 27th, 2022. Again, standard of a five-year look back. And um, there were a lot of collisions on West Street. There were a total of 47 collisions in the five years. And 11 of them though, we parceled out because they occurred at the intersection with Elm Street. And that really had more to do with the intersection versus uh, speed on, on uh, West Street. Nine of the 47 collisions occurred at the intersection of West Street and College Lane. Visibility was an issue as drivers had limited sight lines due to the dike. And then five of the collisions involved a bike or a scooter. Notable that 10 involved rear end collisions where a driver had either stopped for a, pedestrian's in, a pedestrian in a crosswalk or stopped to turn an inattentive driver struck the rear of the vehicle. Um, if vehicles had been traveling more slowly, it would be likely that some of these collisions would not have occurred. Then looking at speed data, we put up the same device, a covert uh, speed data collection device on July 25th, 2022. We were in the area of 124 West Street. I'll just remind folks who are listening that when we install these devices, sometimes people focus on right where we put them, but they're actually put in a way that they are on a post and then they actually collect data usually further down a straightaway. So it doesn't collect it right at the point where it's put, it collects it from a distance away just because that's how the radar works. It sends out a cone and then collects information from vehicles at a bit of a distance. So it was in front of 124 West Street from July 7th to July 17th, 2022. During the data collection period, almost 60,000 vehicle speeds were analyzed. This is posted at 25. The average speed was 31 and the 85th percentile was 35.3. So very notable that the 85th percentile is 10.3 miles per hour over the posted limit. So certainly the covert speed data collection device confirmed that we have a speeding problem on West Street. Um, that in combination with the collision data certainly points us uh, that this is an area of concern. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. Um, and I will add that we have an existing speed regulation for West Street, and it is uh, uh, 25 miles an hour. Um, just from an engineering standpoint, we always try to look at um, what are the roadway markings? Um, what do we have for parking restrictions? Is the pavement in good condition? Um, the pavement is in good condition here. There are various parking restrictions uh, along West Street, um, and there are uh, appropriate roadway markings in the area. Um, so with that said, uh, just wondering if there's any comments from anyone uh, in the commission or any questions uh, for the chief or me on West Street. And then if there are any members of the public here to speak about West Street, you are welcome to raise your hand and we'll recognize you. Councilor Foster, go ahead. Yeah, I reached out to the individual that filed the application. I, I understand you probably did as well. I didn't hear back, um, but I just wanted to highlight that the um, the chief concern from that person as well was about the the safety of pedestrians and cyclists crossing um, that section by um, Veterans Field um, because it's it's such an on ramp to the bike path um, that there's there's people there's people crossing there into the neighborhoods kind of on the backside of Smith. Um, so that was a, an, an extra concern from this person. Thanks, Councillor. Councillor Gore, go ahead. Um, I just 
Can you hear me? We can hear you. Oh. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to say that I, I walk this street a lot and um, it is kind of, people do speed down this road and it is kind of dangerous where um, uh, Smith, uh, there's an exit of Smith and a crosswalk right there that people can't see around the, the, the dike and the bridge to, to, to get to the um to make the turn so a lot of times i'm i'm cut off when i'm walking and um there is a crosswalk um that goes across from that side of the street to the side where the bike path is but it's not up further by the bike path it's back by the felt building so it's a little further back so and even that crosswalk is kind of sketchy to cross because people are speeding down hospital hill a little bit um so I, I do I do see a speeding problem just myself from from walking that street. Um, so I'm I'm not surprised at the speed data that the chief got at all. Thank you, Councilor. Any members of the public wish to speak to us about West Street? Okay. Seeing none, um, again, uh, next steps, we like to hear from members of the community uh, about these applications, um, make sure that we have as much information as possible um, but before we decide on, on how to move forward. So um, we will uh, be in touch about possible next steps here. Next up is a discussion of traffic calming request for Pomeroy Terrace. Um, so this, uh, I, I will turn this over to the chief to talk about collision and speed data. Yeah, chief. Thank you. The five-year look back for collision was conducted on June 27th, 2022. That revealed 11 collisions on Pomeroy Terrace. Uh, it was notable that five of the collisions involved a person driving and striking a parked car. Two of the collisions involved tractor trailer units that struck a utility pole while turning a corner. And this has been an ongoing problem at that intersection of Pomeroy Terrace and Phillips Place. For those of you who may be residents in that area, you've probably seen that pole that is quite marked up on the side from different trucks hitting it over the years. And then we looked at speed data. Speed data was collected from July 7th to July 18th, 2022. We measured the speeds of just over 10,600 vehicles. The posted speed is 25, the average speed was 23, the 85th percentile speed was 27.9. So we did not detect a significant speeding issue on Pomeroy Terrace. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. Um, just from an engineering perspective, uh, Pomeroy Terrace is 1,430 feet long, the width is 22 feet wide. There are sidewalks for the entire length on both sides of the street. There are double yellow center lines for the entire length, and there are marked crosswalks at various locations. There's also several parking restrictions on the street, um, and there is an existing speed regulation, uh, as the chief mentioned. The pavement is in good condition. Um, any comments from any members of the commission? Okay, anyone here from the public who wishes to talk to us about Pomeroy Terrace? Okay, seeing and hearing none, um, again, we, uh, we will do what we can to look at the data that we have and, and be in touch with folks about next steps. Moving on, discussion. Uh, so I'll just uh, briefly talk about the uh, last two items on the agenda. Um, we we actually split out the uh, discussion of traffic calming for Florence Road from Burt's Pit to Florence Height, Heights from the actual intersection of Florence Road at Burt's Pit um, because we wanted to try to um, make a distinction between the two. So two separate traffic calming requests and two separate agenda items, just for those folks from the public who are who are on the call um, and may or may not wish to, to speak on the topic. So first, um, first up is a discussion of traffic coming for Florence Road from Burt's Pit to Florence Heights. Um, so Chief, I will turn this over to you to talk about collisions and speed in this stretch. Sure. Uh, our five-year collision look back occurred on June 27th, 2022. 
that revealed 20 collisions in the past five years. 2018 had seven, the others had you know, two or three. It's notable that nine of these collisions occurred at the intersection with Burt's Pit Road. Those collisions of those six of them were rear end collisions. Two of the 20 collisions occurred at the intersection with High Meadow Road, and both of those were rear end collisions. Uh, both of those indicate uh, speed being an issue and also traveling too closely and driver inattention. There was, it's just notable that one vehicle versus cyclist collision uh, occurred in front of 423 Florence Road. Looking at the speed data, we collected the speed data, data on August 15th, 2022. We put it in the area of 295 Florence Road. That was up from July 21st to August 1st of this year. This is the straightaway between Brookwood Drive and High Meadow Road. During the collection period, vehicle speeds of about 57,000 vehicles were analyzed. The average speed was 34. The 85th percentile speed was 37.8. And we identified that this did have uh, a speeding issue. This is a posted 30 mile per hour zone. Thank you. Okay, thanks chief. Um, and I'll just add a couple of things. It, you know, it's sort of tricky on kind of lengthy roads like this um, when we look at it from an engineering perspective because conditions, you know, the condition of pavement or the, um, you know, road width um, can, or roadway markings um, can actually vary, you know, as you sort of wind down a, a long road like this. Florence Road is, is over 15,000 feet long. So, you know, we're talking about a, a several mile long stretch here where you've got everything from really good pavement condition to really bad pavement condition. Um, and, you know, uh, the other thing I will add um, is, is that through this commission, um, there were actually speed tables, which were installed at number 17 and number 53 Florence Road um, some years ago, which have um, actually proven to be very helpful in reducing conflicts um, at the, at the uh, intersection there uh, with um, um, right by, uh, my goodness, Ryan Road. Um, so um, with that being said, I will ask if there's anyone on the commission who has any comments about this. And then I will open it up to members of the public who may wish to speak. I, I see Justina's actual hand up, um, but before we get to you, um, uh, Carolyn, go ahead, I see your, your hand. Uh, just for clarification, <clears throat> is it a posted 30 mile per hour for the whole segment from Burt's Pit to Florence Heights, and does it change after? Maybe, maybe you didn't look at it. Is it a different posted speed from Florence Heights down to Ryan Road, <clears throat> or is it continuous the whole way? It, it, it's not. The speed limit actually varies. So I, I can give you sort of an overview. I mean, I said you know the the road's fifteen thousand feet long, so I can break the speed limits down. For us here, the, the speed limit starting at the East Hampton town line for a half a mile is 40 miles an hour. And then it drops to 30 miles an hour for 0.13 miles. And then it goes back to 40 miles an hour for 0.9 miles. And then it goes to 30 miles an hour for 1.04 miles. And then lastly, it's at 20 miles an hour for 0.23 miles. So I, you know, what happens, and this is coming from East Hampton uh, into Northampton. So, you know, what happens on a lengthy road like this is it was segmented, um, you know, back in the 70s and, and sort of chopped up with different speed limits kind of ascribed to various different sections. And, you know, we are abiding by those existing speed regulations that are on the books and signing it, um, but certainly, um, it can be confusing for drivers, um, you know, when, when you have a speed limit that's that's moving um, like that over a over a uh, three mile stretch. Any other comments from anyone on the commission? Uh, 
okay. And now we will um, we will open it up to uh, members of the public. Um, I think I'm just going to have to go in order here. So John Stifler, um, your hand is raised. We'll unmute you. Thank you. Um, I live on High Meadow Road. I've lived on High Meadow Road for 21 years. Um, and I, you live on High Meadow Road, you can't go anywhere without going on Florence Road. Um, I have driven on it regularly. And I also see it often from the point of view of pedestrian, because um, I run almost every day and trying to save gas by not driving somewhere else to run. I run down High Meadow Road and down Florence Road until I can get to something quieter. Um, and I sometimes walk to the center of Florence. Um, it's worth noting, and I don't know where this comment goes beyond here, but um, there's sidewalk all the way from downtown Northampton to where route six on route 66 to where route 66 crosses Florence Road. There's sidewalk on a combination of Florence Road and Ryan Road all the way out Ryan Road to Bird's Pit Road. On Florence Road, the sidewalk goes only a little bit farther than Florence Heights. I think it goes to Brookwood. Um, so that means that if you're a pedestrian, you got to be careful. And and frankly, in all the years I've walked and run on Florence Road, I worry there are times that I've made drivers anxious just to see pedestrians there. Um, I try to make a practice out of, of stepping off the pavement up onto people's yards to make sure that drivers know that I'm not at a risk. Um, I very much appreciate the speed bumps in the 20 mile an hour section, the two speed bumps that you encounter if you're coming into Florence from out Florence Road or if you're heading out. Uh, if anything, I think those speed bumps are a lot gentler um, than, than uh, the speed bumps, for example, on North Street in Hadley, which um, were very much called for because that's a popular back road. Um, the, the, the biggest difficulty that comes from living on High Meadow Road is twofold. Um, yeah. Chief Casper mentioned a couple of accidents, accidents there. Um, a lot of people who've lived in Northampton all their lives don't even know where, where High Meadow Road is. And it's easy to drive by it without noticing it until you're practically right on it. Um, and I don't know, other people can judge better than I, what might be done to warn people that there's that turn there. I have had a couple of times, not, not as a regular thing, but a couple of times I've had drivers honk at me when I was slowing down to turn into High Meadow Road and signaling the turn. Um, and once on a bicycle where, I mean, I know how to ride a bicycle and I know how to signal that I'm making a turn. And uh, a left turn on, the, on a bike on the high metro road is almost impossible. A right turn is not difficult, except that at least one driver thought I was being, I was slowing him down. Um, I, if you're coming out of high metro road, it's difficult to see traffic that's coming in from the left. Uh, there's a, a utility pole that exquisitely block, blocks the view there. I mean, it, it almost couldn't be in a worse position. Um, I appreciate the fact that, that it's, a, it's a complex street, the whole arrangement, the variation in the speeds. Um, I've certainly had people who looked pretty annoyed at me when I was driving 30 miles an hour in the 30 mile zone. On the other hand, I think there are probably times I've driven over the speed limit myself. Um, I, I say these things, um, not, I'm not sure what specific changes I'd ask for besides some something to make High, High Meadow Road more visible. But um, somewhere in this discussion, and it applies to all the streets we're talking about. I wonder whether I wonder what time. I'm sure people have discussed it at the meetings I haven't been to. What possibilities there are at crosswalks to put up the kinds of signs that. Um, you can push a button in there, blinking lights to warn motorists that you're actually using the crosswalk. Um, you see those in Amherst, you see those in Williamstown, makes sense, those are college towns. But anyway, I um, most of all, I appreciate 
the the efforts of this committee. Um, I I do wish I, I don't know that there will ever be sidewalks on Florence Road. I sure wish there were one. It would make life easier. And there are plenty of people on Florence Road who um, walk there because they want to go for a walk and they don't drive. Um, John, I appreciate yeah. your comments, but that Thanks. that is three minutes. So I, I do. I'm sorry. I do need to jump in here. No problem. Um, thank you. But, okay. Yeah, thank you. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. I appreciate it. Okay. Next up is uh, Jara. Uh, I'm sorry if I've mispronounced your name. It's okay. It's uh, Jara Malik, and I also am a resident of High Meadow Road. Um, you know, prior to the pandemic, I had um, emailed councilors Labarge and Jared several times about um, Florence Road, and I also had presented at the TPC um, at an in-person meeting um, prior to the pandemic. I've been kind of quiet since the pandemic, but the issue is still very much a concern for me, um, how dangerous um, this particular section of Florence Road is. Um, it's a very narrow road that's curvy, and there is no um sidewalk or shoulder so as a pedestrian it is very dangerous and i think there have been um there haven't been as many pedestrian vehicle incidents because most residents um don't go on this road because it feels so unsafe um i try to avoid walking on it as much as possible but there are times where i just want to go for a walk from my house and not have to drive somewhere um, but frankly, because it feels so unsafe, I am reluctant to do so and will often just drive down to Florence Fields, which I don't like using my car um, for this, this type of excursion. Um, I've been advocating a long time about sidewalks, and I understand that it's not an, a simple project by any stretch. Um, something needs to be done, though. We have PVTA buses. Uh, we have... Um, humongous uh, trucks that are allowed to go on this road. Um, it's a very traveled road. It's like a thoroughfare. Um, but yeah, this is also a residential neighborhood. This is a, a community um, that people use as a thoroughfare. Um, and it just doesn't feel fair or safe um, for the for those of us who live here to feel like we are, are trapped um, and can't simply go for a walk from our house. So I am very appreciative that we're having a discussion about this section of Florence Road and I'm open to anything at this point that will help calm traffic. I mean, again, I'm still 100% pushing for sidewalks, which I know um, is a big undertaking, but at a minimum, I am open to um, anything that can be done to calm traffic because I understand the average speed was what, I think 37, but it feels much, much faster when you are on the side of the road and cars are whizzing by you. Um, thank you. Okay, thank you for your comments. Next up is Justina. Good afternoon. Uh, I live at, I'm Justina Golden and I live at 30, 376 Florence Road. So um, I'm just up the street from John. Um, and I, I completely concur with the comments of, of, of the previous person who spoke. When I go out to get my mail in the afternoon, I hear the cars accelerating uh, as they come from the intersection uh, with Burt's Pit. And it's, I'm, <laughs> I'm even afraid to get my mail in my own front yard. I'm looking back and forth and back and forth because it is astonishing what a major artery Florence Road really is. And so, I, again, I wish I had a, a, a magic solution to this, but I'm very grateful that we're talking about it and, and very much in support of sidewalks and, and very, very pleased that, uh, that perhaps there's, there's some solutions so that we don't feel trapped, so that we don't feel frightened to, to step into our own front yards because people are driving at extraordinary speeds. Thank you very much. Thank you. Councilor Jarrett. Welcome, we'll unmute you. Thank you, uh, Alex Jarrett, City Councilor for Ward 5, which uh, half of the Florence Road here is Ward 5 and the other half is Ward 6. 
Um, and yeah, I've heard from many constituents, both when I was first going door to door and, and walking on this road and, and seeing firsthand uh, how difficult it was. Um, and then since then about this, the need for this. And um, it is a difficult situation because it's already a narrow, narrow road. And um, it would be difficult, I understand, to rebuild for sidewalks. Even just a sidewalk between Indian Hill and Brookwood Drive uh, would open up many more neighborhoods to be able to walk and connect over to the Ryan Road School and, and increase safety there. Um, but uh, I, I hope we can look at um, if speed tables would be appropriate at intersections or at um, uh, raised at crosswalks, such as the one by Florence Heights, um, at uh, striping, whether <clears throat> striping uh, for to warn people when they're approaching crosswalks, uh, and uh, the the width of the lane itself, striping that at ten feet rather than I'm guessing it's probably currently eleven feet, which is generally the standard that we've we've uh, held to. So thanks for uh, anything you can do to help. Uh, the safety here. Thank you, Councillor. Next is Davy. We'll unmute you here in a minute. There you go. Hey, I'm Dave Rothstein. I live at 416 Florence Road, which is two houses up from the intersection of Burt's Pit. <clears throat> I've lived there for 16 years, so I've I've grown used to the traffic, although I don't like the traffic, but you know, like anything, I moved here and I knew what was what was happening. I concur with everyone who said they've had troubles walking or running or biking on the road. Uh, it's it's just it's difficult. It's hard to want to go out, even if you want to walk down to the dog path or the Smith Boaklands. You know, get it, just getting down the road to the intersection uh, is hard. There's not a lot of space if you're walking between kind of the ruts in the road and the side of the road. <clears throat> but I kind of want to talk about the actual intersection with Burt's Pit because I think there are two things that I don't know that they're going to help people who want to speed. I don't think that the signs help, uh, you know. I, people... I, um, can I just, get, I'm sorry, can I just jump in here for a second? Yeah, can I Can I ask you, so this is the next agenda item, is that oh. intersection? So okay. if, you, if you wouldn't mind if we could just hold until we yeah. get to that yeah, yeah, agenda of item. Um, can I just talk sure. about the the stretch then in between because they're kind of like please, both of them please do. I'm yeah, sorry. Please do. please do. That's okay. Um, so yes, speeding is a problem. And I think part of the issue with the speeding is, you know, the signage. And I know that people don't necessarily pay attention to the signage, but what I've experienced is people wait at that intersection and then they bolt, especially during the times of day where they have to wait in line. Uh, and coming off of the 40 mile an hour stretch that's heading down towards the cooperative housing, people are coming up that way and they're going 40 or 50 miles an hour. And it's a tough transition zone when they're anxious to get through there and then come up. By the time they get to my house, they're already going, you know, 35, 40 miles an hour. And then they hit that straight away. Uh, and I agree with the other people. Like It's hard. You know, I don't think we'll get consensus to add sidewalks from the property owners who'd have to clear them. But it would be nice if there was some way to have a shoulder or a narrowing of the road or something that lets people know that they need to slow down in some fashion as they go over that intersection and start going north. Thank or you. Something. All right. Thank you. Appreciate yep. that. And and again, please uh, raise your hand at the next agenda item. And we'll, we'll do. Talk, we'll talk more about that intersection. Thank you. Councilor yep. Labarge, welcome. Hold on, we're just going to unmute you and and um, and you can go ahead. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, City Councilor Marianne Labarge, this has been a big issue with me for quite a long time, many years, many years. And I know our director, Donna Laskaya, had some intensive site visits with me and also along with Councilor Alex Jarrett in the area of what we're talking about. One of my residents who had met our director, Donna Lascalia, wanted to go ahead and have the speed humps. I encouraged the speed humps on Florence Road where the speed limit was 20 to 25 miles an hour. And it's helping 
there's no question about it. Um, we're a little hesitant at first, but you know, because at nighttime they can be a problem. 11 o'clock at night, if you're sleeping, we've had a couple of complaints, but things kind of settled down with that. But I am highly encouraging of having the speed humps placed in this area up, up until Florence Heights. Due to what I am seeing and what's happening at that intersection has become a serious problem, a serious problem. And here we heard our director talk about the splits of the speed limits. We have tried for many years of the 40 miles an hour speed limits, which is a serious problem coming straight through that intersection of the four-way stop going up the hill around the curve. They're flying through there. I hear what I've been hearing for quite a long time. People's quality of life is not a quality of life at all on Florence Road. And especially this area that we're talking about. I do have people from Brookwood Drive who have disabilities. Their quality of life is not safe along with every resident on Florence Road. And I'm really encouraging of possibly looking at putting speed humps within that area in a temporary basis to try it out. I know it's winter time now, but in the spring, if we could look at that. And I know Donna, when you had talked with my resident in the areas of where we heard John talk and so forth like that, of the cost of it. To me, that cost will never replace somebody's life. And seriously, you can't walk on it. That's not a quality of life. Biking on it is extremely dangerous. I think we're hearing people talking about their quality of life here because they don't have one. It's not safe. Sidewalks, I know the only way that's ever going to be done is reconstructing that whole road, that whole entire section, that bad curve. But please, we need to look at placing the speed humps like we did further down on Florence Heights on a temporary basis to try to see if it controls the speed that's occurring from that four-way stop. And I also quickly will suggest, we've been trying this and nothing's happening, of changing that 40, hour, 40 miles per hour area. And even one of the police officers who lives on, on Florence Road said something had to be done with it. So I'm, I'm just voicing myself with all the experience I've had on that road. It's progressively getting worse, more traffic there. So that's about it. And I thank you for all your help and your support. Thank you, Counselor. We appreciate your comments. I've certainly met you out there many times. So thank you. You're welcome. Next up is John. John Kelly will unmute you. Go ahead, John. Hello, thanks. Uh, I'm a recent, uh, I've recently moved to High Meadow Road as well. And uh, since we've, since we moved here a few months ago, um, I've had people tailgating me uh, when I've been trying to turn uh, right into High Meadow Road. I've, it's almost impossible to turn left on the High Meadow Road, as others have said. And uh, with two small children, I daren't take them down High Meadow Road because anywhere close to Florence Road, people are flying by here at fairly high speeds. Uh, so I just wanted to echo uh, my neighbor's sentiments in saying that uh, this the speed on this road is you know, faster than average and uh, g gives me pause. Thank, Thank you. you. That comment, appreciate it. Next up, Jonathan LaCroix. Go ahead, Jonathan. Yep, yep, yep. I, I, I I'm sorry, my wife just, <laughs> she's got the <laughs> furs on. Um, so my name is Jonathan McCroy. I'm here on Florence Road at 312. Actually, I, my wife and I were the ones that put in the request for the traffic calming. And I just want to thank our neighbors just up the street here on High Meadow and along with others that have, with Council of Barge, 
speaking, but um, you know, it's, it's a major problem, as you know. And um, as we, I mean, I think the recommendations that people have been talking about, we concur because the speed, especially where we are, this is the straightaway. This is the section that goes just down the hill, you know, from where Justina lives all the way down to, you know, Florence Heights. And during the summer, I mean, I know, appreciate the, uh, da the data that Chief Casper shared with us, but I mean, when we, when she had actually uh, authorized having some of the uh, temporary uh, monitors, you know, that would determine speed. During the summer, I was a watch because where we, we live, I had a bird's eye view of the, of the screen, 50, 60 miles an hour. So, and, you know, and as people were saying, it's extremely dangerous. We've, we've been here for close to 30 years. The level of traffic has just gone up immensely. And given the construction that goes on, you know, Duffy Willard's trucks, you know, they're going up and down, especially during the active season for construction. They're barreling, we've got tractor trailer trucks. So I think, you know, those recommendations of definitely more signage, you know, ideally, like Councilor Barge said, we would love to see some speed humps because they are very effective down there below off Ryan Road. And, um, and especially this area that is on the straightaway, it's, it's just the people speed. And also during the summer, and even the uh, fall, we have the uh, the street bikes. I mean, you know, this is like these folks. They're just like at nighttime. I mean, we talk, we call the police about it, but of course it's too late. You know, if, you know they're barreling 60, 60 miles an hour, going up and down the hill, or even more. So, so safety is really you know jeopardized here. And um, you know, we've been like we can't go out for walks. You know, as John Stifler was saying, I mean, he, you know, he, he takes his life into his hands, you know, when he's, when he's uh, jogging there. And so, so anyways, can I have my wife say something as well? <laughs> Cause she's right um, it, Yep, sure. I, I just need uh, her name and, and sure. uh, yeah. city yeah. or town of well, sure. residence, please. <laughs> yep, so go All ahead. Right. Yeah, Thank you. Um, so my first name is Lee San, L-I-S-A-N-N, -S -A -N, and my last name is Giordano, G-I-O-R-D-A-N-O. And I just want to thank you for your time today. I know there's a lot of needs in the city of Northampton and especially Councilor LaBarge and Councilor Jarrett, um, their support. But I think for me, it's um, it's not just a quality of life, it really is safety. And the other day I went up, we actually bought one of those mailboxes that I don't have to go on Florence Road. I can kind of go in from the other side. And literally we're so close that I felt like I almost got decapitated. <laughs> and it's just like the traffic is crazy in the morning. I try to get going. And we know that you can't do anything about the volume or the type of traffic, but if you could help us gain some control over the speed, yeah. that would really be totally, totally awesome. So thank you. Great, thank you. Yeah. Thank you both, thank you very, appreciate thank your you. comments. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next is Cindy Mahoney. Hi, thank you for making time to hear um, residents' comments. And I really appreciate the path that was installed. Oh, sorry, my name's Cindy Mahoney and I live on um, Emerson Way in Florence. The path that was recently built from Burt's Pit over to um, Brookwood Drive, but unfortunately it's not maintained in the winter in terms of plowing. And so uh, um, I run along that stretch of Florence Road frequently and because um, you can't, as a way to get to someplace safer to run, and it is very dangerous. I do find myself hopping um, on and off the street into people's yards. And I just wanted to clarify a little bit, the sidewalk um, from going up from Florence Heights, there's a crosswalk and about 50% of the time people will stop for me there, but, um, the crosswalk, uh, excuse me, the sidewalk then ends at Indian Hill. So even in the good weather, when I would want to get onto the path, there's no sidewalk from Indian Hill to Brookwood. So you're sort of exposed there as well. Um, and also I have a friend who lives at 242 Florence Road. And I like to um, 
visit her or leave papers for her. And rather than park in her driveway and have to back out, I park on Brookwood and take my chances crossing the street. So I just wanted to echo that that stretch is especially dangerous for pedestrians. I don't know if um, lines or additional sidewalks even in that stretch from Indian Hill to Brookwood could be installed. Um, that would be really helpful. And at one point along that little stretch, there's a beautiful, beautiful tree. It's on the um, odd side of the road, but it's very large and very close to the road. And it does create sort of a blind spot there. Um, so that's just an additional hazard. And I'll be back to talk about the intersection. Thank you. Good, thank you for your comments. Um, and, and I'll just jump into add, I mean, there, there's been several comments about sidewalks, um, and, and we certainly hear that a lot. Um, and, and just for, uh, just by way of explanation, you know, the city has a limited, um, what's called right of way to work with, um, when public ways are laid out. And that right of way um, is, you know, can vary, it can be anywhere from, you know, 20 feet to 45 feet or 50 feet for some of our, our bigger roadways. Um, but we have to sort of fit everything into that limited way or we start to encroach into private property, um, which can necessitate uh, eminent domain taking. So when folks talk about the installation of sidewalks, um, this can get tricky for us in that a lot of times we do not have space to do what we need to do to fit um, travel lanes and the double yellow center line and a curb and, and, a, and, a, and a shoulder um, and the sidewalk all into the very limited space that we have. Um, you know, what's interesting is we don't necessarily think about um, a double yellow center line as taking space, um, but it does. I mean, we say we need a, a certain mathematical measurement um, for, for that striping. And, and, you know, a lot of times, um, you know, every, uh, every bit of space matters. Um, so with that being said, that's just a consideration um, of some of the things that we need to think about when we think about what improvements can we make in a roadway? Do we actually have the space, um, to the mathematical space to make these improvements? Um, are there any other comments on this stretch of roadway from either members of the commission or from members of the public? Okay, and I appreciate uh, everybody's comments and Councillor Jarrett and Councillor Labarge for, for being here. Um, we, we, certainly, um, we certainly understand that, that there are uh, concerns here um, and they, the data um, shows that they are warranted. Um, so we will communicate uh, very clearly with members uh, of the neighborhood um, prior to taking any further action on this. So thanks everyone for your, for your attention to this. So now I'll move on to discussion of traffic coming request for Florence Road at Burt's Pit Road. So this, this uh, agenda item is going to specifically address that intersection. Um, we thought it made most sense to break these requests up into uh, sort of discrete items. Um, so Chief, I will turn this over to you to, to just uh, talk about collisions, if you could, please. Thank you. A five-year look back for collisions was conducted on August 24th, 2022. During that time, the five years, nine collisions occurred. Um, there was one in 2017, two in 2018, one in 2019, three in 21, and two in 22. Uh, the, let's see, six collisions involved cars stopped at the stop sign that was rear-ended by an inattentive driver. This is really just a common collision. All, every time we do these, usually half of the collisions are caused by just driver inattention traveling too closely and rear-end collisions. So that was consistent here where six of the nine um, involved that. So since speed wasn't listed as, a, as, an, as much of an issue just for this one intersection, I didn't collect speed data for the intersection. Um, and speed was not determined to be a factor in any of the collisions that we looked at. It was driver error and driver inattention. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. And, and I will add that this intersection is always stop controlled, meaning that there are stop signs on all approaches. 
There are also painted stop bars and stop ahead warning signs on all approaches. There are no sidewalks at this location and there are existing speed regulations um, in place as we have discussed. Um, so that's uh, just a, a couple of uh, engineering comments. So um, I see some hands up from the public. Any comments from any members of the commission on this or questions? Okay. All right. Pat Mahoney, you're first. Uh, thanks. My name is Pat Mahoney. I uh, also live at Emerson Way in Florence. And um, we'd asked for this um, traffic calming or traffic study uh, some months ago. And while I appreciate the need to collect data about what's happening in that stretch, one thing I, I have to think that the chief should be able to provide this is how many citations or warnings were issued for that stretch and for the, for these other uh, requests as well. I mean, I think that would be another element that'd be very helpful to know about that can got that could guide your um, your solutions to this problem. But then. What the um, what you're not gathering is you're not gathering any information, or you have no way to gather information about near misses and the stressful moments trying to navigate those that intersection. So I understand you're you're trying to work on improving this um, this intersection, but your data collection is probably incomplete. Yeah. Thank you for your comments, appreciate it. And, and I think one of the reasons that we have public meetings like this is that so we can hear from people um, like exactly the comments you just made um, because the data doesn't necessarily tell the whole story and that's why we wanna give folks the opportunity to speak. So thanks, thanks very much for your comments. Um, next up is Cindy Mahoney. Hi again. Um, so, my name is Cindy Mahoney and I live in the same house as Patrick Mahoney um, on Emerson Way in Florence. And my concern is um, you referenced the um, stop lines and stop signs, but the stop lines have faded significantly. So um, cars are not able to actually see where they are. So I think it's um, vital that the stop lines be repainted as soon as possible in the spring. I would also like to see larger stop signs installed because um, especially on the corner, I guess it would be the Northwest corner, there um, weeds often um, grow up pretty tall during the summer and the stop sign and that, that um, visibility for drivers uh, going along Florence Road or turning left from Burt's Pit onto Florence Road is, is impacted and limited by the overgrowth. So repainted lines, maintaining that corner, larger stop signs. Um, but as Pat said, um, the near misses are something that we can hear on Emerson Way. We hear the screeches, you know, occasionally you hear the thump at the end of the screech, but we can hear the brakes screeching on Emerson Way, which is a half mile back from that intersection. Um, and then again, you know, I drive through there daily, but also run through and, um, it's very difficult for pedestrians, of course, to navigate. There are no crosswalks, but I, I'm not. Um, but because it's like a game of chicken, the cars don't always stop. Um, so you're not quite sure if they're going to stop for a pedestrian if they don't stop for a car. And I also think like some sort of education underneath the stop sign, like four way stop sign, because I think initially where Florence Road used to just be two way stop signs on Burt's Pit. Um, a lot of people still treat it as though Florence Road doesn't have stop signs and roll through. So thank you very much. Okay, helpful comments, thank you. Next is John Stifler. Sorry, can you hear me now? Yeah, sorry, wait, yeah, go ahead. Crosswalks would alert drivers to the fact that there might 
be pedestrians there. There aren't very often. And I think a lot of drivers forget that sometimes there are. Thanks. Okay, thank you. John Kelly, go ahead. Hi, uh, my name is John Kelly. I currently live on High Meadow Road. Uh, previously uh, lived on Emerson Way for a few years. So we've uh, encountered the stop sign by multiple directions. Um, one thing we have noticed over the years is from multiple directions, people will either roll through without stopping. Uh, we have seen people, especially on the Florence Road, um, going straight through on Florence Road, where people sp sometimes speed through as if there were no stop sign. And it is also extremely difficult sometimes to figure out who has the right of way due to kind of stops on locations and seeing things. But uh, yeah, definitely see people uh, will go two cars to a stop sign sometimes as well. Um, but yes, definitely rolling through, speeding through sometimes and multiple cars going through kind of as one unit, like just kind of following each other going through. Uh, so that's definitely been an issue. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, Dave, go ahead. Uh, yes, and thank you again for everybody for paying attention to this and making uh, time to address the issue. Uh, yeah, I'm at 416 Florence Road, which is two houses up from the intersection with Burt's Pit and 16 years of walking, observing. Uh, it's a tough intersection. And I think the things that people have said so far, I just would echo uh, one, uh, having the city pay attention to the vegetation that creeps up along. There's one lot in particular that hasn't been developed and the stop sign warning sign as well as the stop sign often get obstructed. Um, the lines uh, do fade over time and it would be great to have them repainted for the stop sign. But I think one of the issues is the placement of those stop signs. They're not close to the intersection. Some are further back and so it's hard to tell who arrives at the line first, even if they're painted well. And sometimes because of the vegetation, especially cars coming from the West Hampton side uh, of Burt's Pit coming into the intersection, you can't see. So someone may be there and you don't know that they have the right of way because they're obstructed or it's not obvious that they're there. And I would love to see some crosswalks there. I, whoever said, you know, it may raise drivers' attention that people may be there. It's not just people may be in that vicinity of the crosswalk, but people may be along the roads that lead to it. I think that makes a lot of sense. When I go walking in the area, I always get to that intersection. And, I'm, you know, it's one street to cross, but it's always a, boy, I hope I brought my Blue Cross Blue Shield card with me in case something happens. And you shouldn't have to think about those things when you, when you cross the street to go home. Um, and then the last thing I'd say is uh, thanks for having this meeting because I've had an opportunity to meet a number of my neighbors who I haven't had a chance to meet because it hasn't been safe to walk in the neighborhood. And you've referred to it as a neighborhood and I'd love to think of it that way. But I think that just illustrates the, the point at hand, both in terms of the speeding, but also the traffic calming around Burt's Pit. And the last thing I'd say is, uh, regard to speed bumps in this area or speed humps, it may make sense to have something elevated or painted a different color in the middle of that intersection, like you do down in Laurel and, and Grove Street area. Um, I'm a little hesitant to have the speed humps just because, you know, depending on where they're located, the fact that the Duffy Willard trucks are going up and down, especially in season, you know, they're jake breaking all the time, which is an indication that they're going too fast. But the rumble that they would cause in a residential neighborhood going over a speed hump, just something to pay attention to in terms of locating, regardless if we're on Florence Road, that might be. And that's all I have. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Councilor Labarge. Can you hear me now? We can. Go ahead, Counselor. Okay. Um, that intersection, I remember a petition was put in place. Many residents wanted a four-way stop. The mayor at that point agreed with it because some of the accidents that had occurred, and one of them was very, very serious at that time. I am wondering, Donna, as the director of the Department of Public Works and Chief Casper from our police department, here we are and we have solar lights at our stop signs now 
on West Stanton Road, um, Glendale Road, and also West Farms Road. And thank God, because every other day I go over and talk with a couple of residents on the corner and there's no complaints. And I'm actually seeing where cars are stopping at that intersection. So I'm wondering if possible of looking at putting solar lights on those stop signs. Also, I agree with line painting. If you do a lot of research on it, it's amazing. I mean, without it, there's going to be problems and we need to make it safe at that intersection. I received a call from um, Barbara Casca last week on Florence Road. They actually saw a white pickup truck just go coming down Florence Road before even coming to that stop sign, just went right through and heading up toward down Florence Road past um, Florence Heights. It's definitely, there's a speeding problem going on here. I feel that that intersection needs to be looked at really carefully here because somebody is going to get hurt. I think that the painting of the lines on the streets, no matter what street it is and what intersection is crucial. Just like I said on West Farms Road, Glendale Road, I have young youths, young, eight years old, attempting to try to cross that. And I had to get out in the middle of the road and put my hand up to let that young youth cross. We have no sidewalks either. So I think painting is extremely important. And I want to thank you, Donna. I know it took us a year to get those solar lights on those signs, but so far it's been successful. So thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor. Councillor Jarry, go ahead. Thank you. I'm curious about the um, average daily traffic volumes here and whether uh, if a different type of control device might is appropriate, appropriate at all, um, whether that's stoplight or mini roundabout. Um, certainly a mini roundabout would address the uh, safety and would it probably increase throughput um, at that intersection, <clears throat> uh, though they can certainly be expensive. So just curious uh, if any of those uh, have been considered. It, yeah, I mean, we would have to take uh, formal traffic counts, you know, if, if, if we were to contemplate, okay, is this gonna hit warrants for like, let's just say a signal um, or let's just say uh, a mini roundabout um, provided that we actually had mathematical space to install one um, that, that would require um, more formal counts. Uh, more formal traffic counts and turning movement counts um, than the city could could do in house. Um, so it, it, at this point, you know, I think the first step was to have this meeting and sort of hear concerns um, that may not be apparent, you know, via email or or um, uh, you know in the application itself. Um, and and we're going to have to look at you know what what further data should we collect, but um, but it, there are warrants that need to be hit for uh, different types of of stop control devices, as as I believe um, you know. So, um, but certainly uh, steps to contemplate moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Jamie, go ahead. Uh, hi, folks. First, I just will say that I appreciate all the comments from the neighborhood. I think um, you're all raising some very good points. And, you know, I think that generally we've seen a lot of development in this area, certainly with Emerson Way and, and other housing happening. It's becoming a more densely uh, settled area. Um, at the same time, much of it is within a mile and a half of uh, downtown Florence or Ryan Road School. And so just from a policy perspective, this is where we want people out on their feet rather than in their cars and on their bicycles. And so, you know, understand there's constraints, but getting sidewalks on these streets and, you know, enabling that foot traffic um, can only benefit all of the people in the neighborhood. And of course, the presence of pedestrians can also have a traffic calming effect. So I just wanted to add that to the record. Yeah, thanks, Jamie. Next is Barbara Elkins. Hi, thank you. Um, I'm, I also live on Emerson Way and I wanted to second something that Pat Mahoney said. 
about the idea of near misses. Um, I'm struck by how often over the course of a week, I go through that intersection all the time and I either find myself in an almost near miss or yeah. I watch someone else. Um, and it's, yeah. I kind of have the sense that, that a lot of people don't actually understand that you're supposed to take turns. Um, and you'll see somebody, you'll see three cars go through and other people are waiting or someone else is sort of rightfully getting into the intersection and then more cars are following, racing to follow the one that just went through. So I'm, I do, and I don't know how you approach an education issue about something like the use of four-way um, stops, but I do think that a lot of people don't understand how they're supposed to work. And I think if you, if there were a way of calculating near misses, there would be a ton of them. And, and it's, I, I find myself tensing up every time I go to that intersection, which is a couple of times a day, because I have no idea. I had to get my thumbs up. Uh, oh my who's, who's going to be, um, who's going to be there and if they're going to pay attention to the turn taking um, approach or not. Um, so just like to um, say that, thanks. Thank you, Barbara. Any uh, members of the commission or other members of the public who wish to speak about this intersection? Councillor Foster, go ahead. Yeah, thanks. I, I just wanted to, um, I heard some really interesting points um, from some folks. I just wanted to mention a few of those. Um, Councillor LeBrow brought up the um, the blinking stop sign and I've, I've been noticing the one out 66 as well. Um, so I, I just wanted to second that and, and um, you know throw that out as, as one idea that can potentially help to increase that visibility there. Um, there, I think it was Dave Rothstein mentioned, um, you know, something like the intersection at Laurel Grove with the brick. It, it doesn't need to be that, but um, there've been a couple of times I've wondered as we've talked about these big intersections, I think it was the Earl Street intersection, Earl and Grove, we talked about the last meeting. I was wondering if, if this is like, you know, down the road kind of idea, but if there's some kind of street art or, you know, really out of the box thinking to draw visibility because this this is another four way stop with just so much pavement that I think sometimes it looks like a road to people or they want it to be a road because they're in a hurry. Um, so I just wanted to, to bring that up and, and seconding also Dave's point, um, you mentioned hearing the word neighborhood and, and meeting your neighbors. And, and I just wanted to draw extra attention to that. I live on Grove Street which used to be a pretty high speed cut through. Um, and it was like 10 years ago um, that sidewalks came to Grove Street. And I didn't live there before the sidewalks, but when I talk with my neighbors about what it was like there beforehand, um, they'd never considered it to be a, a neighborhood. It was just sort of like a place where people lived and they didn't know their neighbors. But now that there's sidewalks, there's kids out biking and walking with their families. And you know it's kind of like a, a high density walking route. And it's become a neighborhood where people have really gotten to know each other. It's a pretty special thing that's happened. And so I, I understand all of the right of way issues and all of the limitations and, and just something to think about though is the way we can connect communities um, through uh, encouraging safe walking and cycling where, where people get a chance to see each other instead of just um, driving through. Um, and then the last thing just to highlight, yeah, I, I, not a lot makes me super cranky, but going through four-way stop signs tends to make me grumpy just because of the idea of the um, driver education. And, and that's like a, a much larger global issue, but um, so many times people don't seem to be aware of how to take the turns and then they're trying to be nice and they're waving somebody on and then somebody else starts to, to go and it, it just becomes a, a, a real challenge. Um, and, and that's true of the four-way stop signs um, throughout the cities and actually beyond Northampton. So, um, but I don't know, the last thing I'll say about that is that, um, the idea of driver education um, you know, of a little sign underneath the stop signs as well as say all way stop or four way stop or something just to bring up uh, one more piece for folks. Yeah, that, that's actually a very helpful comment for us. I mean, part of our uh, audit of, of the intersection will be is there appropriate signage and that's typically um, standard operating um, installation procedure for us is is that level of communication with drivers. So very helpful comment um, about that. And, and that's a, a very easy fix um, on our end. So thank you for that. 
Um, okay, any members, uh, any other members of the commission who have uh, any other comments for us? Pat, I do see your hand up and I'll get to you in a moment. I'm just gonna, okay, go ahead. Uh, thanks. Um, can the chief speak to traffic enforcement in these areas? Like what does the city police department normally do? Sure. So in uh, October of 2021, we started a directed uh, patrol program, which is essentially really targeting these areas using data to really drive uh, where, where we're placing our very limited resources. So we use, like you heard me say, a couple of the streets today we've identified as areas of concern. And so those areas receive attention. Uh, one area that the director mentioned earlier is in front of the high school. And so now we are directing resources in front of the high school. So we have a list that comes out and that's where we use our resources. But of course, we just don't have enough police officers to meet the demand of the city. And that's, I don't have enough people to meet what everyone in this community in this room is asking for. Um, it's limited. So we have four or five officers on at a time and we have a city of 30,000 and a high call volume. So I'm, acknowledge the fact that we have a directed patrol program, we probably meet the target of being in those places about 65 to 70% of the time. And that's just, those are just that list of streets. Some of the streets we've talked about here, um, I don't have on the list because I have to prioritize the ones that we've identified as having some of the most serious collision and speed data so we can target those areas. Okay, thanks Chief. Okay, anyone else have uh, any further comments on this topic? So like the others, um, it, we appreciate the, the conversation. It's very helpful. And um, we will make sure that we clearly communicate uh, next steps. So thanks to everyone who came out to speak about this and thanks to Councilor Labarge and Councilor Jarrett for their advocacy around this. Okay, moving on, uh, updates from the commission chair and vice chair about previously submitted traffic calming applications. So um, uh, I have uh, an update on uh, both Hinkley and Warner Street. So these are traffic calming requests that they came to us uh, some time ago, which had been discussed at this commission um, and for which a final report has been generated. Um, that report was actually linked to the agenda. Um, I, I'm not displaying it on the screen um tonight but uh if you are interested it's it's uh also available on the the um website through the city's website um through the transportation parking commission um part of that website and, and you can read the final report on this um so i'll start with uh hinkley street um so this request came to us um uh back in june of 2021 we looked at collision data we looked at speed data um, and we analyzed um, uh, over 2,000 vehicles um, and uh, again looked at uh, collisions in the area. Uh, the speed limit there is 30 miles an hour. Um, the uh, 85th percentile speed was 29.1 miles an hour. Um, at this point, there is not a significant speeding issue on this street. Um, and uh, we make no recommendations. Uh, this is a joint recommendation from the chief of police and from me. Uh, we do not make any recommendations for traffic calming measures. Um, moving on to Warner Street, um, this uh, traffic calming request came to us uh, in March of, of 2022. Um, we looked at uh, collision data. We looked at speed data, collision data, five-year analysis showed zero collisions on Warner Street. Um, uh, we collected uh, speed data from over 1,200 vehicles and found the 85th percentile at 19.8 miles an hour and an average speed of 15 miles an hour um, based on uh, a, an analysis of that collision and speed data. Um, again, we make no recommendations uh, for traffic calming measures at this time. Um, the, the data just does not uh, support it. So, uh, I don't know if anyone on the commission has any comments around that. Um, Councillor Jarrett, go ahead, we'll unmute you. Thank you. Um, my comments are specific to Hinkley, but, but also relevant to many other streets. 
Um, I think as a community, we need to have a broader conversation about what is an appropriate speed for our streets. Um, in this case, you know, two residential side streets, which generally have a, a default speed limit of 30 miles an hour. And, you know, with Hinkley, we see through the two speed collections that the 85th percentile speed is about 30, um, which does mean that one in seven vehicles are speeding faster than 30 miles an hour. Um, so the 85th percentile speed, uh, which you know means 15% are traveling faster than that speed and 85% are slower, is not the only criteria to set an appropriate speed, um, especially in densely populated areas. The engineering judgment can be used to determine what is a safe speed. Um, the National Transportation Safety Board has a great safety study that was released in 2017. It's called uh, Reducing Speeding related crashes involving passenger vehicles. It talks about concerns with relying on 85th percentile speed and instead using a, a safe system approach. So that's defined as, uh, quote, uh, or the safe system approach to speed limits differs from the traditional view that drivers choose reasonable and safe speeds in the safe system approach. The speed limits are set according to the likely crash types, the resulting impact forces and the human body's ability to withstand these forces. So, and another quote from that report, the, the likelihood of a pedestrian death increases from 5% at a vehicle impact speed of 20 miles an hour to 45% at 30 miles an hour. Um, so that's interesting because Warner Street has a, a 85th percentile of uh, 15, I mean of 20, um, and Hinkley as 30. Uh, so if you're struck on Warner Street, that would be a 5% chance of death and struck on Hinkley Street, a 45% chance. Um, so I would suggest that on Hinkley Street and other similar residential streets, we design for a much lower speed, 20 or 25 miles an hour. Um, this is apart from our ability to regulate speed limits, which we know that this, the state restricts, but um, it doesn't restrict the design speed that we can implement on these streets. So I encourage us as, as a city to adopt a citywide safe speeds plan. Start with design and then someday maybe we'll be able to set the speed limit. You know, Hinkley Street may not be the top priority street to put in traffic calming. I'm not advocating for it to receive special treatment. Certainly we should prioritize the places where we're seeing the most crashes. But in the recent redesign of Hinkley Street, had we set a design speed of 20 miles an hour, we would have likely built a different street and a much safer and, and a more livable street. So thanks for listening. Um, I appreciate hearing any comments commission members have. I'm happy to talk with uh, commission, commission members or the public about this issue. Okay. Thank you, Councillor. Um, and I see one hand, Mike. Go ahead, Mike. Hi, uh, Mike Soroff, 117 Hinkley Street. And um, really all I can say is to uh, echo Councillor Jarrett. Um, I uh, walk on uh, Hinkley Street um, very often. And, I, and when cars go even 25 miles an hour, it, it seems it, it seems too too fast for for the street. Uh, there are children who, who ride bikes on the street. Um, and I, I really uh, 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 um, a speed limit of, uh, of, of 25 or 20 uh, would, would would be would be better for for Hinkley Street. I, uh, I moved in uh, about four years ago, five, almost five years ago, uh, right when the the about the time the reconstruction of the street is, it was finished. So it's it's very easy to drive about thirty on that street, and that is just too fast. Thank you for hearing me out. Thank you for your comments. Any further discussion on this? Okay, hearing none, is there any new business? Okay, hearing none, may I have a motion to adjourn, please? Uh, so adjourn. moved. And a second? A second. Any discussion? Okay, Beth, please call the roll. Uh, 
Uh, could I just get one more time? Was that Jamie first and Adam second? Other way around. Thank you. Donna? Yes. Jody? Yes. Jamie? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Karen? Yes. Jamila? Yes. Adam? Yes. Diana? Yes. That's unanimous. Thanks, everyone. Happy holidays. We'll see you next month.